Good Saturday to you. Thank you for joining us on From the Halls of Justice. And we're in the studio today with our special guest and my most high profile colleague and co producer, Mervette Arnstein. Hello. Thank you for being here. Of she's course. So, she's so cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, Mervette, today we have with us Mr. Bill Raywall and our uh, FBI, former FBI agent, Mr. Stephen Moore. Hi. And welcome back. Thanks. Thank you. Yay. Okay, we're going to do a follow-up on what's going on. Tell us the status of the Amanda Knotts situation. Well, uh, since we last talked, um, all the evidence that uh, had been used to put Amanda and her boyfriend in jail was sent to a uh, an independent examiner. There's a new judge in the case. And what we've been screaming about since... Uh, since the conviction was that none of this evidence seemed right. Uh, when you have a knife that they say is the murder weapon but won't, is too big to fit into the stab wounds, you've got some problems with the evidence. So when they say uh, the DNA on the blade matches the blood of the victim, you're saying, well, how does that happen if the knife actually couldn't have done the stab wounds? So. Um, the new judge in the case, one of his very first acts was to send the knife and uh, another piece of evidence, which were the only bits of DNA evidence that placed uh, Amanda and her boyfriend at the murder scene. Um, he sent that to an Italian lab, a university in Rome that teaches forensics. And uh, late last month, uh, 27th or the 30th of June, their report came back to the court. And um, the report basically says that there's no reason to believe any of that DNA ever was on those things. That the DNA that they said was the victim's blood on the blade, mm -hmm. if it was there at all, the only thing they can think of is that it was some kind of plant starch or something like that. Um, they have suggested very strongly that this uh, piece of evidence had been contaminated by something else. They didn't make any allegations as to how it was contaminated, but said that this didn't appear to be something that was naturally on the knife. That's a strong statement and a big turnaround. It's a huge turnaround. Um, the other piece of evidence was a bra clasp that, uh, of the victim. And on the face of it, you'd say, yes, this is really substantial evidence because the prosecution was saying that Amanda's boyfriend's DNA was on the opening and closing clasp in the back of the bra. And you'd say, whoa, done, send him away. Here's the problem with that. I watched the crime scene video of the Italian police. It was mm -hmm. a two, three hour video. It was uncut. It was just wherever they turned the camera on, wherever they turned the camera off. Nothing had been edited, nothing. And on the day after the murder, I've got a very clear picture of two of the technicians holding this bra clasp in their hands. No gloves? No, they, no, they had gloves. Okay. And it was, it was nice and, and white and everything it had been ripped off the other part of the bra. Okay. And it was, it, they were holding it in their hands, okay? Mm -hmm. The film cuts. The police said that 47 days later, mm -hmm. they went back to the, to the room where the murder had occurred and found that bra clasp. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got, it, we've got them holding it mm -hmm. the day after the murder. So the only thing that would match that is that they found the bra clasp of the victim, ripped off her clothes, and they decided it wasn't important to pick up. Oh, okay. And they put it back down on the floor which boggles the mind. Um, so what happened is 47 days later when they did pick up this bra clasp, they brought it in and they said there was the DNA of Amanda's boyfriend on this bra clasp. So they went back and the experts looked at this bra clasp uh, at the judge's uh, recommend, uh, requirement mm -hmm. and they said that the DNA profiler uh, who had worked the case had missed a Y chromosome, had, had said that this thing had a Y chromosome in it. Okay. That would make Female? it a That would make it a male, male? Which, would, which would mean that the, it, was, it, was, it could be the boyfriend. 
but they said that they misidentified a different chromosome as a Y chromosome. The, the DNA that they found was actually that of a woman. Okay. So the bottom line is they were either incredibly inept, not even being, it, it's one thing to, to mess up and say that out of all these millions of people, it's this person and make that mistake. I can almost understand this. But if you get to the point where they say, all of these millions of people, and we can't tell you whether it's a guy or a gal, you've got some serious, serious trouble. They also said that that was contaminated somehow. Um, so you pick it up, you drop it on the floor, you find it again. And then <laughs> it was found swept in a dust pile. Okay. And so um, all of that indicates that the DNA evidence is going to have to be thrown out. There is no evidence for that. Okay. The only witness that the prosecution had was a man who said on the night of the murder when Amanda and her boyfriend said they were at his house, he, saw, he said he saw them together an hour before the murder on the, on the plaza outside. He saw who together? Amanda and her boyfriend okay. in the plaza an hour before the murder when okay. they're claiming that they were in, their, in his house. Okay. That was very problematic until they brought the witness on the stand finally and for the first time he was allowed to be cross-examined. Okay. And he said he saw them there at the park because he lives at the park behind the bench. Okay. And he does that because he's a heroin addict and that he was absolutely certain that day that he was completely stoned out of his mind. Uh, that he had taken heroin several times that day. Mm -hmm. said, but he remembered very specifically that they were there because he remembers everybody wearing the costumes. Oh, okay. It's like I'm high, but I'm not that high. Well, yeah. <laughs> well the costumes actually made sense okay. because <laughs> Halloween, Halloween was the day before the murder. Mm -hmm. So he basically said, I saw them standing around in their costumes with all the rest of the costumed people mm -hmm. taking the buses to the discos, okay. which is what they did on Halloween night. Okay. The day after Halloween, when murder occurred, there were no buses, no Halloween costumes, no nothing. So the judge threw him out. So you have no DNA evidence, you have no witnesses, and all you have then is this confession which had been thrown out by the Italian Supreme Court. So what they're going to say now is they're going to have to go in court and say what we have against Amanda is that she was in Italy the night of the murder and admits it. And that's where we that's all they have against her that she was in the country, which means you could probably also convict Berlusconi the president because he was there too. Okay. We've got proof he was in Italy that night. Okay. So, the bottom line is, uh, she should be home uh, by by this fall sometime. Okay. What are you thinking, Bill? <laughs> I I think it's been an amazing turnaround for uh, the Knox family, for Amanda and her mom and stepfather, um, to see where this has come mm -hmm. and how far this has come, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, it, it seems to have caught a lot of media attention. Yeah, it's not only caught media attention, but I was noticing even in a, in a little magazine called Rolling Stone, <laughs> as, they've, uh, as they were chronicling the uh, events out there, and, and what's even more interesting is it's caught the attention of the Italian government uh, and um, uh, the parliament, and they've uh, introduced uh, uh, resolutions uh, because it appears that it's anti-American sentiment in Perugia that caused the conviction. How did they get the new judge? I mean, was it that much of an outcry? Well, Apparently there were some Americans who were screaming on television about the evidence. Okay. And um, it was causing a, a very large backlash in Italy. And um, so what they did was, I believe, you know, they haven't explained this, but everything points to the fact that the Ministry of Justice or whoever point, appoints the, the judge mm -hmm. said, you know what, let's just remove, let's just remove the, uh, the factor where people would say it's an inside job. Let's bring in a judge from, from the outside of the community. And they brought him from far northern Italy, almost on the... Uh, 
uh, Swiss border. In fact, his last name is German. It's, his name is Pratillo Hellman, Pratillo Hellman. Okay. and uh, they brought him down, and their belief, I think, was a, was a, a good one. Right. If she's convicted again, then then we've done it with a judge who wasn't from that town. Right. Well, it's not on our hands. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, the the first thing the judge said at, in the appeal was, um, basically, there is nothing. He said, "I read the report from the last trial," and he said, "I believe nothing except that the victim is dead." So basically, he was disavowing anything that happened before, just based on his reading. So they had to start all over. They did. They did, which is why she's been in prison coming up on four years. Her birthday was, actually was day before yesterday, she turned 24. She had just had her 20th birthday when she went to prison. Mm. Uh, they held her a year without charging her. Wow. So, it's uh, hopefully this long nightmare is going to be coming, coming to an end and everybody involved can get on with their lives again. Okay. Let's change the subject just a bit. Can you give us an update on the Pepperdine case? Well, we're all smiles today. <laughs> 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 uh, we were uh, at uh, 4.30 yesterday in uh, Department 23 of the uh, Los Angeles Superior Court. Um, a settlement was put on the record and uh, the matter is officially closed with the exception of documenting some stuff. Uh, the paperwork and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Unfortunately, we are under a uh, confidentiality clause that the defendants insisted upon, and uh, so we're not really at liberty to, to talk in any detail. In um, fact, they wanted, they. Well, I'm joking, but I was going to tell you they didn't want me to even smile for a week afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I have to tell you I feel completely vindicated. Uh, yeah. I, I feel very good about what happened uh, yesterday, and um, I, I, I would like to say that, that Pepperdine is still a phenomenal university. I, I love what they do. I, I think their president, uh, Andy Benton, is a, is a phenomenal, honorable man, and uh, I'm just glad this is all behind me. Yeah. You look good. Yeah. Thank you. I feel relaxed. So, tell us about things that have been going on in your life. You're still married. You're keeping I a am. wife. I <laughs> am. <laughs> she, uh, she reminded me of that at, right after the settlement. You know, we, are, we are still married. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I, I feel relaxed. I have uh, been working on a book that will be coming out in the spring. Uh, not on the Amanda Knox case. I do not want to... Um, I, I don't want to muddy the water between what I'm saying and any motive I have for saying it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to write about Amanda's case. Okay. But um, I do have a book on my career. Uh, Chicago Review Press is coming out with it in the spring, okay. and uh, we don't have a name for it yet. Uh, the working title is Steve's Dumb Book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the working title Michelle's given it. And it, it basically talks about my uh, my career from being a, a brand new agent to uh, when I retired and it's I, it's it's been cathartic writing it. I, I'm the real Jack Bauer? <laughs> <laughs> I think the original title was I'm not Jack Bauer. <laughs> um, but it's it'll be different in that it's not written like you would see a TV show about an FBI agent. I, I just always was surprised that I got to do these things and uh, so it's kind of a gee whiz you know, thing rather than I'm, aren't I something kind of book. Yeah. One of the one of the uh, the blessings that I've had is that, you know you sit around in uh, in in settings with nothing to do but talk, <laughs> and and uh, like yesterday, uh, and out come Steve's war stories about uh, about events that take place, and they're just absolutely entertaining and uh, just uh, just a lot of fun and it would be uh, excellent reading if you get a lot of that into the book. Oh, well, I, I hope so. We're getting a lot of we, we're getting a lot of stories in there. I mean, the FBI is I, I remember one day we did a uh, we did an undercover and the agent who was doing the undercover was worked for me and he was one of the best agents I had ever seen undercover and he was so good at it that he had to do things to keep his interest in it, to keep a challenge in it. Mm -hmm. And so he went into a, a mall, a public mall, 
to have a meeting with somebody on a drug deal and at the end of it he was going to arrest the person so to make it difficult for himself he rented a wheelchair and did the entire undercover in a wheelchair but we paid him twenty dollars on a personal thing if he would wear a lap robe that had the FBI seal on it oh. <laughs> and he did the entire undercover wearing a lap robe with the FBI seal on it oh and my it cost God. me twenty bucks but he did it and <laughs> so I mean there there are things like that in the book just things that we did that were fun and not part necessarily of the overall case. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> so in this book, like you have the correct spelling of Mervet's name and oh, my yes. name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. David's name, Yasa, I, Paul, <laughs> we got all the guys. We we've changed some of the names. You know, <laughs> just so but if you see To protect it, the innocent? If you no. see a TV host named Beyonce. <laughs> oh <okay. laughs> <laughs> you, you, you might recognize her. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> so and and wow. then uh, so you have a, a possible TV show coming up and it's well I have to do something for a living okay. I, I don't have a job right now <laughs> and um, so uh, a, f a man from a, a film company and I have been working on a prototype for a TV show and it, it would not be about me or anything like that it, it mm. or the Amanda Knox case it has to do um, it's kind of like a CSI type of show oh, okay. and uh, in fact we met with the producers of CSI yesterday on that so uh, we're getting some traction in in having it looked at by producers and we'll see where it goes I Wow well, that sounds very exciting <laughs> well it would it would uh, sure help make the mortgage payments for a while that is awesome so it's life's good, and, and Bill's Bill's a good lawyer, by the way. If you ever, <laughs> uh, they, they, they can't uh, they can't endorse anything. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. yeah. And so you notice I was silent. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm silent. I'm silent. All right. So what else are your plans? I mean, you've got you've got things going on. Your wife was you know with you through all this situation. She's a sweetheart. You're she looking really good. Um, I'm actually. She's actually writing part of the book, uh, okay. almost a rebuttal section. Uh, <laughs> when, when I write a chapter and say I was, I was say, in Pakistan for this month doing this, she is going to be writing a paragraph where she said, or paragraph or a page where she says, while he was doing this, this was, this was what the family concerns were. I, for instance, one, one time while I was in Pakistan, she had to move. I mean, the, we moved residences from one house to another while I was in Pakistan and so I left from one house came back to another and she handled the whole move mm -hmm. I hadn't and that was with three young kids so she gets a lot of the credit for this she mm. she held down everything uh, are you going to take a nice long vacation together <laughs> well, I've taken one. <laughs> um, well, this will be a fun day. I think, I think we're going to uh, go as a family probably this fall and, and go camping up, up near Monterey or something mm -hmm. just to get it all behind us. But I, I not, I'm not going to feel like we're across the line until Amanda Knox is home in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be September, October, something like that. Once she's home, then it's then it'll be a vacation for a few days. I was gonna say, so you're not going to Italy? Um, <laughs> yeah. There, no. there are. Uh, if when Amanda is is released, mm -hmm. there certainly needs to be some arrangements made for uh, her not to be bothered by people for her to get to airplanes and not to be ambushed by the press and um, so yeah I might okay all right um, do you think that this would be a good time I you don't want to bother her but um, for you to meet her and and your wife and she should really thank your wife because your wife got <laughs> you involved in this well and you know there were there's dozens and dozens of people who've been working towards her her Release. cause. There was a fundraiser in Seattle last night that were, was uh, a bunch of different bands volunteered. So there's a lot of people who are going to be meeting her for the first time who had a lot of things uh, to do with, with her case. So she's going to be meeting a lot of people. I'll enjoy meeting her. Uh, my, my goal though is to uh, is to 
get her get her to Seattle, shake hands, mm -hmm. give her a hug, and come back here and read about her her exploits as she goes on. She doesn't need a bunch of us getting into her life. She needs some privacy in the life right now without people bothering her. It's amazing. Your demeanor is so different. You know, my mom watched the last show with you on it. And she said, that guy's wound up. No, and then <laughs> she's like, oh, he looks so good, his presentation. And he's oh, so like, now really? I don't look good. You know, this is, you know, this is my, no, you look good now, but Thank now you. it's like, you know, you're calm. You almost look at what, that Miami Vice look thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I'm really, re I feel like a thousand, between the Amanda Knox evidence things, um, and, and fe people finally listening to us and and uh, the press now, as, as Bill said, Rolling Stone came out with that, with an article, like a 20-page article the other day, saying that she was uh, she was railroaded. Um, the Italian press, believe it or not, is now behind her. Uh, the British, no. oh yeah, the Italian press is behind her. Uh, OG Magazine is their version of People, and they have just been every month, every week, putting out uh, long articles on how she was basically framed. That took a lot of power to do. They, uh, there are some interesting people, you know, I don't know how much time we have left, but one of the things I have really thought was fascinating is seeing the different members of the press who at the beginning were very much against her. Mm -hmm. And when they're confronted with some very obvious evidence that, that explains away some some things that confuse them uh, they I have seen some of the most vociferous tabloid writers uh, turn around and actually write letters of apology to her family and turn around and now are are, are backing her and saying I was wrong I just I've seen the evidence I, I was wrong but then you have some who have written books we have, there's one gal who wrote a book called The True Story of Amanda Knox, Student Killer. Okay. Well, now she's got a problem because she can't say with mm -hmm. her book out there that I was wrong. And mm -hmm. so she's, um, she's just fighting tooth and nail to keep Amanda in prison. This, this particular writer had written a piece in Newsweek uh, shortly after Steve appeared on national television uh, last September. And um, uh, strangely enough, that, that, uh, the reference to that article, and, and that article called Steve a nutcase, essentially, and uh, poor judgment, and he's got it all wrong somehow or another ended up in a memorandum that Pepperdine had written mm. as part of its uh, basis of maybe it's time for Steve and Pepperdine to separate so uh -huh. and uh, she's the only one she's she's the only one out there still holding a torch and saying keep her in jail but she's got a, f a financial interest in it sure one, one of the other interesting parts that I, I picked up here in the last, uh, last couple of months as we were having to work pretty heavily on Steve's case uh, was a gentleman who is a member of the Italian Parliament. And he was a family man, and he, he couldn't figure out how a 20-year-old a girl would be involved in sex and drugs and so forth and so on. So he decided to go visit her in jail. And, and, and he, he could because he was a member of parliament in Italy. Mm -hmm. And so he proceeded thereafter to visit her 20 plus times and uh, found her to be a very normal girl and what, what's all this about the sex and drugs. And he, he wrote a book uh, diarying his, uh, his visits with her and, okay. and supporting of Amanda Knox Innocence, been one of the ones that uh, uh, over in Italy that have, uh, have pushed very hard on her behalf. You know what's interesting is when the uh, when the report was made public that all the evidence was contaminated. Mm -hmm. um, I heard from him uh, that uh, a cheer went up inside the women's prison from not from Amanda, from all of her friends. These are Italian women who have gotten to know her and, and are completely convinced that she had nothing to do with it. So for other prisoners to cheer when you're going to be released mm -hmm. is really kind of neat. She has been uh, helping teach Italian to illiterate Italian women mm -hmm. who, who are in the prison. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I wrote Amanda, I said, I'm, 
I'm bilingual. I'm illiterate in two different languages. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's that kind of she's that kind of person who, even while she's been there for four years, has found ways to better the people around her. So it's it's really kind of a. What happened with the boyfriend situation? What's going on with that? The boyfriend situation is the same. If he if he's released or if if she's released, he's released. They, their trials are the same. Okay. And uh, I've been talking back and forth with him and he's he's gotten while he's in prison he's gotten his master's degree in computer software design okay and um, he has gotten uh, some some really significant offers from corporations that want him to come design software for them okay. and I'm really looking forward to meeting him so are they like back in love he threw her under the bus oh, what's no, going no. on uh, in <laughs> fact the latest writings he's done publicly uh, ex are him saying that everybody said that I've thrown her on, you know, thrown her under the bus. Uh -huh. He said I never said that. This is what I said, and and he said I, I. For instance, he said, they said where was she when you were asleep, that mm -hmm. night, and mm -hmm. he said I don't know where anybody was when I was asleep. Mm -hmm. So that came out in the press as uh, Raphael says Amanda w left while he was asleep, mm -hmm. and so he came back and said that's not what I said, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so he and Amanda, from my understanding, I've never asked Amanda about hi him, mm -hmm. and I've never asked him about Amanda, okay. but from my understanding, they, they write, they're cordial, but they had only been seeing each other for two to three weeks before they were arrested, and they haven't seen each other except in trial for four years. So they're not romantically linked or involved, but they, they have some one big thing in common. Definitely. They want to go home. Anyway. <laughs> they both want to go home. And I, yeah. I, I, I have reason to believe they'll probably uh, spend some time talking and, and this after they're, they're released. But uh, I bet they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what an, what an interesting way to end up in a relationship. And then um, it, it's, it's very tragic. So it's a good cause to be educated on when you're traveling abroad and and familiarize yourself with and, and uh, I think it's I think it's a very important lesson to learn here that that every, even in the Casey Anthony trial you know I don't know if she did it or not but you have to let the you have to be careful with with what with the evidence and let the evidence follow take you where it goes the real evidence we're wrapping it up, and this has been from the Halls of Justice. Mr. Stephen Moore, thank you so much for being here. Mr. Thanks. Raywall, thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Marvette, thank, thank you, you so much for being sure. here. And we will see you next week. Congratulations on your TV show, Who Are His Friends? Okay. <laughs> We are your friends. No. <laughs> thank you, Bianca. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Sorry. See you next week. Thank you very much.